And I don't know of too many people like myself that didn't go through several years, in my case, decades, of a process. Before. Right, well, I, I heard that uh, you, you only recently, you, you were a Catholic uh, yeah. for most of your life, is that right? Right, right. And, 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 and what is it that made you sort of abandon that? What did? Yeah. Well, it started about 20 years ago. So it was a slow process. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was a slow, pro slow process of accepting I come from a scientific background, and I always considered myself skeptic, and the more I understood skepticism, the more I realized that I was a, a loner out here. I was a, I was a theist, but I, I was accepting everything else that the, the skeptics were talking about. But I was that was walled off. That was a compartmentalization on my part. Well, that's, that's, that's something called cognitive dissonance. Yeah, and, and, that's that's, and it got to the point that when I did make the, 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 the conscious decision, it was an emotional decision. It wasn't an intellectual decision because of the cognitive dissonance. I mean, I actually got physically sick in church. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, nice. I, I just... No, you don't know that was the devil. <laughs> no, that's not the exorcism of the point. You're the devil, sir. It was, it was a point where I finally had to say, I couldn't live in the two worlds of skepticism and, and theism. I couldn't live it. And people like Ken Miller, they can do it. I just can't do it. I, I, there, there are two major periods in a, in a person's life where they are most likely to change uh, their, their beliefs. One is in their 20s, and the other is in their 70s and 80s. And I think you can kind of guess as to why people might change their beliefs around 70 or 80, because it's probably pretty scary. When you face death, <coughs> when it's just looking at you, you can see it across the room, and you're like, you know, the old Grim Reaper with his arm, he's looking at you. <laughs> and sometimes that could be a, a strong impulse for you to want to believe in something so much that you'd be willing to toss all of these really logical ideas. Would you like, fuck it? Um, what I think that we're lucky to be in a situation, like I'm assuming most of us are, where we don't need religion. That we have enough else in our lives to realize that we don't need to rely on something fake to get through every day. What would you say to someone who, say, lives in Darfur, has their entire family killed, and all they have is believing in God, that they're going to see them again? Do you think that's wrong? Because that's my main like moral issue with religion. Is oh, it provides comfort yeah. for those who might need it. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you a different question. Um, let's talk about the situation maybe over there, where what if, the prob what if many of the problems that had occurred were actually because of religion? And some you know, sort of tertiary way that I mean, you might not be immediately aware of. I mean, uh, look at in countries like Uganda and, and, and Rwanda and places like that. In Uganda, there are children that are accused of witchcraft. And these children are tortured, they're beaten, some of them are killed. And the reason that this happens is because ancient African tribal beliefs in witchcraft meet with modern-day Christianity. And Christianity is very opposed to witchcraft. They say, witchcraft is real, you must prosecute and burn witches. I mean, the Salem witch trials were all about that. And in these kinds of places, religion causes a great deal of misery. And, and you could say, well, on the flip side, it provides comfort. But does that comfort justify all of these other kind of problems that people are having because of, of the superstitious belief is, is held up to such high regards? I'm not entirely sure if, if, if that's the best way. And besides, my general feeling is that if comfort is your only reason to believe in something, it doesn't sound like it's a very honest way to live your life. You're like, I believe in this because it provides me comfort. I would say that, yes, perhaps it is less comforting to be an atheist. Yeah. Uh, so what? I wake up and I don't feel like I'm a hypocrite. I wake up and I don't feel like I just have to believe in something because it feels better. It, it, does, it is harder. You know, it's like I was saying before, when, when, when people sometimes switch over, they have to kill all these people who they've ever loved. And it's I, I can't imagine how that, how, how that must feel, because it's probably pretty much like, you know, like, like an axe dropping. You're like, oh my goodness, I'm never going to see them again, right? So I, I can empathize with that. Switch, we're switching tapes? All right. Free a few people, but uh, maybe disbelief isn't the strongest bond. <laughs> but well, still. We're, we're all a bunch of outcasts, though. Being, well, that's, that's, you know, that is that, the that's other right? thing, right? You know, we can finally come out that, hey, I'm not a Christian. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, there's, there's definitely that element. Like, now we are kind of, 
the rejected one of the society. We're the ones that people mistrust the most, even though statistically we're actually more trustworthy than everybody. Even though statistically prison populations are disproportionately uh, you know, Christian rather than atheists. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, while um, you said the prison population is uh, disproportionately, I would say religious, not just Christian. Yeah, well, okay, no, it, obviously yeah. there's, there's um, <coughs> there. But if you do wind up in jail, you're more likely to get out just by saying you Exactly, yeah, that's, 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 that's one of the great... I brought up that I was yeah. violating the societal dynamic and realized that I can't do that. Well, then that's the God thing hangs out in jail. Yeah. Sorry? God hangs out in jail. <laughs> so he does most of his recruiting, right? And, and, and definitely you can, you can see why it might be advantageous for people to claim belief. Because you're like, I'm more likely to get uh, the chaplain to uh, you know, suggest that I, I've been a good prisoner, that I've been an ideal prisoner. And this, is a, this is a classic tactic. There is the assumption that if you're religious, you're more moral. I've never seen any compelling reason to believe that anyone that is religious is more moral. Everything that I've ever read seems to suggest almost the opposite. And the reason why it seems to suggest the opposite is because we often attribute what we believe personally to what God believes, rather than the other way around. So one of the studies that they had done is that they asked people to take contrary beliefs to what they had. So if you believe that, evolution, uh, if you believe that abortion was wrong, you had to take a position that it was right. And once in a while, people actually switch positions. And when they did, they asked the person who had come around pretty much 180. They're like, oh yeah, God believes in the same thing that I do. Even though maybe 30 fucking minutes ago, God believed that abortion was wrong, and all of a sudden he believes that it's right. And we attribute our own beliefs to what God must believe. Because I think it's actually the most arrogant thing that, that, that we humans do. We're like, oh yeah, God believes what I believe. So I'm awesome. And God must work through me. <laughs> Any other? Let's let's step up for participation, guys. Come work here for a little while. You with a nice shirt. I uh, um uh um, since you just mentioned uh, trusting and mistrust, or I'm just gonna throw out that uh, just this I I think it was about five days ago. It might have been a week ago in the news record or local paper. There's a letter to the editor about um you can't trust agents. <laughs> Sounds like a great letter. What, what, was, what were the main arguments? Uh, atheists, well, atheists arguments? don't have a, the only argument, it was about 50 words, it was just a real short thing. The only argument was atheists don't have a moral foundation, therefore you can't trust anything they do. There, yeah, there I was comment a on much that. longer one, though. I'll comment on that because I replied to that and it's going to be published. Okay, you did? Yeah. I, I thought about it. I got a call yesterday from the paper. It's going to be published in the next couple of days. All right, we'll look at it. So, uh, <laughs> basically, you know. If you're an atheist, you know what the answers would be. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's so funny enough that once in a while, those kinds of letters are actually completely and utterly uh, fabrications. Something I, I don't know if most of you are familiar with what pose lies. Pose lies. Whenever you're trying to satirize evangelicals or strong religious belief, that it's sometimes so difficult for you to tell the difference that it might as well be the same. And on my own site, I can't tell you how many times I got fooled. You know, you go on this one thing, and you're like. Landover Baptist, which is probably the one that <laughs> really got me at the beginning, because you know you're, you're early on, you're like these guys are outrageous, so you're posting it up, and all of a sudden yeah. one person's like, dude, it's sad, it's satirized, and you're just like, fuck, I look like an idiot. But that's kind of, I actually thought about Poe's Law a little bit because it did seem a bit weird. You're like, well, if I can't tell the difference, what is the difference? And I think actually that's that's kind of the mark of bad satire, where it's so good that it might as well be the same, and you have to believe that there are people themselves religious who actually think that this is probably serious and believe exactly the same thing. So Poe's Law is one of those weird conundrums. You're like, people really think that way. This is a satire, but I mean, it might as well be the same, right? It might as well be just as real, and sometimes you can't. So it's, it might still be Poe's Law. Who knows, right? We may not know. Cross your fingers and hope that it's not. <laughs> yeah. Going way back to the scientific materialism for a second. Yeah. Do you think that Maybe religious people have the disposition that they have towards atheists.